Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for signing up, registering to attend this webinar. Um, this is my big project um, for my time here at Gator Care. I'm currently an intern um, and I'm getting my master's of food science and human nutrition at UF right now, which is one of the last steps before I become a dietitian. So I'm really excited. I'm on my way to a career in dietetics um, and this is super relevant. Um, I'm also a nutrition assistant for Gators football at UF, um, and everything that I'm going to share with you today, I've probably also said a million times to the guys, um, because everybody has fallen victim to some of these uh, scams and traps and things that fad diets push on us. Um, like I said, one of a dietitian's biggest pet peeves is fad diets, um, so hopefully I'm going to absolve that pet peeve for myself today. Um, selfishly by teaching you how to spot a fad diet and how to choose a plan that's a lot more sustainable and a lot less harmful. Um, I also wanted to add a quick disclaimer that um, dieting and eating habits can be kind of a controversial topic uh, because food is super personal and I'm really aware of that, uh, but none of this is meant to offend or belittle anyone for having tried these diets. It's just intended to help you avoid falling for these traps in the future and make more informed decisions about your health. Uh, today, we're going to cover the key features of fad diets, the dangers and red flags to help you spot them, how to adopt balanced and sustainable eating habits, and hopefully those things will help you create a more positive relationship with food and just promote long-term health in general. Um, so from the 1930s to now, people have been fad dieting, and it's a little bit entertaining, um, and it has been enduring. The 1930s birthed the grapefruit diet. Um, people back then thought that grapefruit had some magical fat-burning property that would effortlessly shed pounds, um, and it didn't work. Uh, the 1960s, the groovy 1960s, brought about the sexy pineapple diet. Um, and they thought that just eating pineapple would help them shed weight. They thought it had this magical enzyme in it, um, and it didn't. It also didn't work. Um, in the era of neon and leg warmers, there were soup diets in the 1980s. Um, people thought that if they just slurped down soup, they only consumed liquids, that they would see instant weight loss. Everyone was still craving more because obviously soup wasn't going to cut it. And that one didn't last. The 1990s is when Atkins diet took the center stage and carbs became public enemy number one. Uh, that's a trend that we still see today, but people were really embracing bacon and eggs and they were scared of toast. Um, but as time revealed, that was not sustainable in the long term either. And then welcome to present day where fad diets have diversified. Everybody's trying something new. You hear about it on social media way easier. Um, keto, which I consider Atkins' evil stepsister, has led the charge in making low carb popular again. Uh, then there's detoxes and cleanses, uh, subscription-based diet clubs that offer a sense of community, but they're still no fun. They're restrictive. Um, and guess what? It's going to keep going on and on and on for the end of time because people constantly hop from diet to diet. Uh, there's no shortage of short-lived solutions. Um, and while it's really comical to like look back at all the crazy things that people have tried, it also reveals this harsh truth that um, these quick fixes always circle back to reality. Like they're just a quick fix. They don't work in the long term and they're super, super frustrating and they're traps. Um, so to break it down, a fad diet is like that flashy trend that everybody jumps on. It promises quick weight loss. It's the talk of the town, but it's not something that you would normally do. And it's certainly not a standard dietary recommendation. Um, I like to categorize them with three key features. So the first is that they take things to the extreme. They cut out a whole food group or they push some sort of crazy calorie restriction on you. Um, the second feature is that many fad diets rest on trends and anecdotes rather than solid scientific evidence. So maybe a celebrity did it or um, just the average person did it and they shared their story via a testimony, but it's not really backed by any sort of research or scientific evidence. 
And then number three, the allure of fad diets is that they promise a really, really quick outcome, really quick weight loss. Um, and that caters to our desire for instant results. That's just a natural human desire. Uh, but those quick fixes don't work in the long term, and we know that. So <laughs> let's have a little chat moment. Um, let's see if I can open the chat too. If you can recall some examples of fad diets beyond the ones that I had in the timeline, drop them in the chat, and then we'll see if I got the ones um, that y'all are coming up with in my little examples box here. All juice, definitely. I can think of a few that some of the football players have tried. Cabbage soup, yep. Beverly Hills diet, I've never heard of that one, or the cabbage roll diet. And these are crazy. Raw meat, I've seen that one. Intermittent fasting. Awesome. Gosh, there's a lot more that I guess I didn't even know about. Um, here are the ones that I came up with though. So just detox, paleo, the blood type diet is really popular on TikTok right now. Um, keto, which was mentioned on the timeline, South Beach, Atkins, Nutrisystem. Um, there's a crap ton of them. Um, you, probably enough for you to try one year for the rest of your life and you would never run out. But we're not going to do that. Um, but anyway, these promises of fad diets, they're super, super tempting, um, especially when it's a quick fix, we get those instant results. But I think that it's really important to understand the danger behind following something like a fad diet um, and what makes that a trap and dangerous for your health. For your health. Oh my goodness. So um, let's address some of those dangers. Risk number one is nutrient deficiencies. Oops. Pop up. There we go. Um, eliminating food groups is a recipe for deficiencies, especially in essential nutrients like B vitamins, calcium, iron, magnesium, and overall energy and protein. Um, and that can have various implications on your health that we don't have enough time to get into today, but I promise they're worse for you than carrying a few extra pounds. Um, the second risk is mental health. Um, struggling with like having strict rules around food or not getting the results you want and the amount of time that you want, that really messes with your head almost more than it messes with your body. Um, and life is hard enough. Like we don't need that extra frustration and anxiety that comes with dieting. Risk number three is what I like to call yo-yoing. So that's when your weight's going up and down and up and down when you're cycling through stopping fad diets and starting them again. Um, and that weight loss and regain can actually slow your metabolism and open the door to heart disease and diabetes in the future. And that's something that we really don't want. Um, and I'm sure that's nobody's intention when they start the diet, but it is a harsh reality of it. And lastly, risk number four is the threat of a disordered eating mindset. So food is not the enemy, but when we start fad diets um, or start restricting, that blurs that line with what food is to us and restricting like that leads to deprivation. And then that just shapes an overall really unhealthy relationship with food and with your body. Um, and we don't want that. It's really clear to me. It's probably clear to you a little bit that the benefits of this quick little fix are actually super damaging in the long run. So I want to give you some resources to help you spot those traps before you fall for them. So we're going to do the top 10 fad diet red flags. Um, there's examples on every red flag that I literally pulled from real diets, real advertisements. Um, and I'll admit it was super funny while I was going through reading all the ads, but it was also super disturbing because they make these claims that um, they're just crazy and there's no backing behind them. There's no scientific evidence and people aren't aware of that and they buy the product or they start this plan and it can have really serious health implications. So um, while we're going through, if you see some examples or you see the red flag and it makes you think of a diet, feel free to drop that in the chat. Um, you don't have to, just to, to keep a conversation going. So the first red flag is a promise of rapid weight loss. Um, we see this one all the time. This is any claim that you're gonna lose more than a safe amount of weight 
and that's one to two pounds per week. So this example here says lose 20 pounds in two weeks. That's like five times a safe amount of weight loss. Um, and then at that point, you're probably losing water weight, you're losing muscle, um, not fat, which is what most people are probably going for when they start a diet. Um, and we certainly, muscle loss is really, really never should be a goal. Um, red flag number two is that it eliminates an entire food group. So this could be carbs, this could be fat, dairy, um, anything that you would normally eat that's being completely nixed out of your eating habits. Um, keto is kind of one of those. It's really low carb, um, sometimes no carb, but that kind of falls into that category. This one is honestly the most annoying to me because I think it's so disrespectful. It's so disrespectful to consumers um, and it's just profiting off of people's insecurities about their body image and their weight. Um, the weight loss and diet industry is actually worth $299 billion, um, which is bizarre and honestly super scary. And most of that is not regulated by the FDA. So those powders and pills and shots and juice cleanses, all of that stuff, um, it's often not being regulated. So they sell you these things and they tell you you're going to shed pounds and they know full well that either they're not going to work or that the mechanism lies somewhere in that you're just flushing out your GI tract and it's just doing disgusting things in your body and making you excrete a ton of solid and fluid waste, TMI. But that's really what's happening in most of these cases. Um, we also see this one all the time. Some celebrities touting a product or diet that they tried and they got amazing results from. Uh, this example really makes me giggle because we all know that Kylie Jenner has access to a trainer and a chef 24-7 and she has the finances for procedures to tuck or unwrinkle anything that she wants. Um, and she probably didn't even do this detox program in the first place. She's just making money off of advertising it. Um, this is a huge one to spot. Most of the time when celebrities are like touting a product, um, especially like a wellness product that they've tried, it's really just they're making money off of it or they think it was helping, but they have all these other habits or uh, resources on the side that we don't see that are really getting them to whatever their image is or um, body type. Let's see. Uh, speaking of detoxes, red flag number five is any diet that promotes a detox or cleanse. Um, to be blunt, that's not a thing at all. Um, you're literally just going to be on the toilet all week. Um, that's probably the point of it, but it's really uncomfortable. And fortunately, our bodies are already designed with super efficient detox mechanisms. So if you have a functioning liver and kidneys, you're totally good. Don't waste your money on a detox or cleanse because it's super unnecessary. Um, this one is also not a real thing, uh, spot reduction. So there's no way of eating or exercising that's going to blast that belly fat. Um, weight loss is gradual. It's full body kind of thing. And you might notice weight loss around like larger regions of your body or in your face um, quicker, but that doesn't really have anything to do with what you're doing or what you're eating. Um, it's more just to do with what our eyes are drawn to first and the proportion of weight in different areas of your body. Let me know if I'm going too fast, but um, red flag number seven, I already touched on this a bit, but this should be a huge red flag and it's super easy to identify. Um, my general rule of thumb is that if it's telling you to fast or telling you to eat anything less than 1500 calories a day, for me at 2000 calories a day, um, that should be for everybody. That's a general recommendation, but that's, please just run. That's not enough to sustain you. Um, not enough to support your daily activities and not enough to make you happy, first and foremost. Um, it's not going to last and it's actually super damaging to your overall health. Let's see, number eight is a one size fits all approach. Um, any sort of generic plan that doesn't have any room for personalization is not realistic. Um, we're all different people, we have different preferences, we have different schedules. We have different activity levels. We're just plain different. And any eating pattern that 
doesn't account for that isn't going to work. They need to be flexible, they need to be dynamic, they need to be personalized. Red flag number nine should also be a given. If you see the phrases miracle cure, secret formula, metabolism boosting, fat burning, anything like that, please, please, please do not waste your money. Um, these claims like it's gonna boost your metabolism, it's gonna burn your fat, um, that's so, so, so short of reality. Um, what is reality is that our body has a very, very complex metabolic process, and there are things that can influence our metabolism, um, but there's not a single food or a diet that's going to do that for us or cause any sort of substantial fat loss. Um, how we get there is just having balance with nutrition and physical activity. Let me check the chat just to make sure. See? Um, and then the last one it is a red flag in itself if it's not something that you can see becoming a realistic and positive habit. Um, not a quick fix, a habit. And you might be thinking to yourself, um, I've done some of these diets, I've done keto, I've done intermittent fasting, and it works. And sure, you might have lost a little bit of weight, um, but there's a lot of research that shows that these fad diets aren't sustainable. They're not for the long term, and they're usually not healthy. Um, it's important when we're finding an eating pattern that works for us um, that it's to fuel your body and that it's balanced and that it works and it's something that you can make a habit. It's not something that's uncomfortable. Uh, you're dreading every meal. You don't feel satisfied when you eat. It needs to be it needs to fuel you, fuel your body and fuel your mind. Um, and you all are just so lucky because I'm going to give you the blueprint for that too. Um, so this is my mantra when it comes to meals. I use it for myself. I use it when I'm building plates with the athletes at the dining hall. Um, and I want to make sure that every guy and myself has each of these things on their plate because they all serve a really important purpose. So to break it down, carbs are, are actually the preferred fuel for the brain and body. Um, and you may have heard people say like when they start keto, they don't have any energy or they have this keto brain fog. Um, that's because they're truly depriving their brain and their body of its main source of energy, which is carbs. Um, the protein is so, so important. Um, it has so many roles. It helps regulate appetite. It helps promote satiety, which is that feeling of fullness. Um, and it ensures proper function of your immune system. Feeling like you can't stay full after a meal, that's likely because you're not getting enough protein in. Um, color, these are your fruits and veggies, stuff that gives you nutrients, antioxidants, keeps you happy and healthy. Um, I don't think I really need to keep going about this one. Everybody's mom has been telling them to eat more fruits and veggies since they were a toddler. Um, and then lastly, oops, there we go. Um, is healthy fats, and those are really just essential for maintaining overall energy and hormonal balance, um, and those healthy fats come from things with monounsaturated or polyunsaturated fats, and um, the digital packet that was sent out in the reminder email, and the, it'll be sent out again in the follow-up email, that includes some food lists. One of them is a healthy fat food list, and they'll have some examples of those things. Um, so this is roughly how that concept translates to a plate. I'm calling it a meal blueprint because I do want it to be individualized. It should cater to everybody's personal goals and needs. Um, so it's really just a rough outline of what I recommend or what dietitians like to see on a plate, especially um, in the setting that I work in. Um, but it really is applicable to, to most people. So a quarter of the plate should be protein. Um, about a quarter is carbs, and then about half of it is color. On a day with more activity, the carb and protein portions might be a little larger. Um, if you're just trying to increase your overall protein intake, that might be a little bit larger. Um, so it may look more like thirds than quarters and a half. Um, but it's really just adaptable to you and your preferences. Um, and then there's also some inclusion of healthy fats somewhere in there. So that can be just preparing your veggies with olive oil, um, 
having some avocado, having a handful of nuts, throwing some seeds on top of a salad, um, whatever that may be. Um, and if you want to uncomplicate this concept even more, I just say make sure you have one of everything on your plate. Um, doesn't really matter. You're just hitting every category. Um, and that's a simple way to put it, too. So let's look at some examples. Um, here's probably what everyone was picturing um, when I showed the empty plate but super boring example, um, but still tasty. Protein is the grilled chicken, carbs, uh, the white rice, and then colors, the mixed veggies. And I just said they were prepared with some olive oil for the healthy fat. Um, this is a less boring example, um, but a breakfast example. So the eggs and bacon for protein, pancakes for carbs, apples for color, and then the apples are paired with some peanut butter for that healthy fat source. Um, and not everything has to even follow this uniform plate. Like you don't have to put your food in little quadrants. Um, it can look like a lot of different things, like my personal favorite, these tacos. Um, you get your protein from the steak, you get your carbs from the tortilla, color from the tomatoes, the onion, the lettuce that might be hiding underneath all the other good stuff, um, and then avocado or guacamole for your healthy fat. Um, Sometimes the hardest part is coming up with things, and maybe this will give a little inspiration, but I kind of want to see how creative everybody is. So if you want to drop a meal idea in the chat um, and try and include all four components, uh, carbs, protein, color, and healthy fats, um, and we'll judge everybody's creativity. But it should, hopefully, this will give people some ideas of what they can do with this little blueprint. Um, and it doesn't have to be boring. It can be unconventional, whatever y'all want. Love it. Great ideas. I'm all for anything that's like tacos or burrito. It's really easy to get everything in there, I feel like. These are great ideas. Okay. While you guys send those, keep sending those. Those are really for you to just see the variety of things you can do with this little blueprint. Um, but I'm gonna keep talking so we stay good on time. Um, let me close this chat. Um, so like I said, sometimes the hardest part is just coming up with what to eat. Um, so in that digital packet that was sent out in the reminder email and will be sent out in the follow-up email, um, there's some tools for making that part just a little more practical for you. So the first sheet, the cover sheet is just a reminder of what the components of the meal are and what they do for you. Um, then the good stuff, there's a daily meal plan template that's um, on the left here um, and an example of how that might be filled out. Um, but there's space to list what you're going to have for the meal and then what component of that meal fits in each category kind of. Um, and it kind of just makes it easier to see like the balance that you're getting from your meal. Um, and then the example is kind of an ideal scenario, so don't feel like you need to be so rigid or eat that um, example every day. It's just there as an idea. Um, and then I also included some food lists for each group because um, I just think it's nice to have a master list to choose from when you're making your grocery list or you're just planning out your meal, um, especially with veggies and things like that. And then the last thing in the packet is a reminder of the principles of intuitive eating. Um, which is the last thing I'm going to talk about today. Um, so something that fad diets don't account for or respect is the idea of intuitive eating. And what that really is, is just trusting your body's natural signals and cues and making mindful choices when it comes to eating. Um, so the first pillar of that is to reject the diet mentality, rejecting fad diets, all of that. Um, and that's just letting go of a restrictive mindset and being more compassionate when it comes to food and body image, um, kind of like this really flexible, loose plan that um, we just talked about. The next is honoring your hunger and your health. So this just means that when you're hungry, 
you're hungry, you recognize that hunger is normal. It's a normal physiological signal that your body just needs fuel. Um, but that also means that you have boundaries when it comes to food. So you're feeling your fullness. Um, you eat when you're hungry and you respect when you're comfortably full. Um, and you're really tuning in to how you feel while you're eating and listening to those cues. Um, the next one is making peace with food. And it's a difficult one, um, especially if you're a chronic fad dieter um, or you have food rules or things like that. But it's essentially just giving yourself unconditional permission to eat all types of foods um, and not feeling guilty or feeling like you have to restrict. Um, it's also being aware that not every food that you eat serves the purpose of being super nutrient dense. Maybe you're eating it because it brings you joy or it reminds you of your childhood, or it's an opportunity to make a new memory with a loved one. Um, it doesn't always have to be um, straight, strict fuel nutrients for your body. The fifth pillar is challenging the food police. Um, this is also a difficult one, but it's just um, challenging those internal or external negative thoughts or judgments around food. Um, and then lastly, discovering satisfaction. And simply put, food should be enjoyed. It should be fun. Um, you should like what you're eating. Um, and that's my favorite one, honestly. We're running really short on time. I might be over it, actually. Not quite yet. Um, but to wrap everything up, um, there's some things that I want you to take away from the webinar, if nothing else. Um, the first is to be skeptical and remember the red flags. Uh, we all have an innate ability to discern fact from fiction. And if it sounds like a scam, then it probably is. Like trust your gut when it comes to the things you're being told, especially surrounding diet plans um, and, and things like that. Ooh, why do I keep doing that? And products. Um, so the next is building your plate for the long term. So that's just following that blueprint that I kind of shared, the carbs, protein, color, and healthy fats, and making sure that it's food you like, because that's how um, you get your nutrients in and you stay satisfied. And then lastly, get comfortable with the idea of intuitive eating. Um, tune into your body, find some balance. Food is not supposed to be like this stressful, anxiety-inducing thing. Uh, but to get to that point with food, we also have to give ourselves some grace and have confidence in our ability to make balanced choices um, and just eat the things that we like. Now, that's enough of me jabbering. Um, I want to take some time to answer your questions. I think that we're right at one, but I'm happy to stay a little bit longer to answer some questions. Um, Mallory and Victoria have been monitoring the chat for them, and I think they'll just share them out loud. Um, but feel free to keep sending them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm going back through to look at all of the um, meal ideas and they're so good. Julia, so we didn't necessarily get any questions, um, but we are, Victoria is going to save everyone's meal ideas too. So we'll send that out. Um, and yeah, there were some comments on some relatable things, but I don't think anyone had any questions. Okay. I think that the reminder email that I sent out um, is from my email. So if anybody thinks of any questions while they're just going about their day, feel free to email me and I can answer them. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody for listening to me jabber on for 25 minutes about fad dieting. I'm pretty passionate about it. Here we go. Here's a question. How do I feel about Noom? Um, I, to be blunt, I think that Noom is a scam. Um, they market it as like an intuitive eating concept, which um, is what I just talked about, but it actually is still super restrictive. Um, obviously, whatever works for you works for you, but I personally wouldn't ever recommend it to somebody because it's, it is restrictive in nature. Um, and it doesn't really leave room for things that you would normally do or building balance on your own, like sharing, doing those things on your own, having those, building those skills about, uh, building balance plate on your own. Um, that was kind of complexly said, but in some, I don't love new. Um, I've never heard of Golo, so I can't answer that, but I'll certainly look it up and answer that in the follow-up email. Herbalife, um, 
is a complex one also. They just have a wide range of products, um, but the biggest thing for me with them is that it's not FDA regulated. So what they say they're putting in their product, you can't really prove. Um, and I would never want anybody to be consuming anything that they weren't aware of or that could be potentially dangerous. So I always kind of say to shy away from Herbalife products. Um, but that's also a personal preference thing. And yes, the slides will be shared in the email. Fruits and veggie pills, um, it just depends on what the goal is for those. So if it's just to make sure you're getting enough vitamins in, um, I always say that supplements are meant to do just that, supplement. Um, it's nice to get your fruits and veggies in in their food form first. And if you feel like you aren't meeting that, um, then picking a, um, a good reputable brand of a multivitamin or some sort of vitamin is fine, uh, but definitely food first. Let's see. Golo is another expensive scam. You have to buy their magic supplement and follow a diet. Yeah, if anything's selling you like a powder or a capsule and they're talking about all of its benefits, just if they're going to make money off of you trying their diet, then you probably don't want to do it anyway. Don't give them, don't give them your money. Oops, I keep doing that. Okay, since we're so far over time, not far over time, um, but I'm going to answer these, I think, in the follow-up email, if that's okay with everybody. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining. Um, I really appreciate it. This was my first time doing a webinar, and um, y'all have been great and really good at interacting, and um, it's just been awesome. So thank you.